The ECB released its biannual financial stability report yesterday and said that Europe's banks will have to write off more loans this year than in 2009 and even more in 2011. Our next guest says he doubts any European banking stock has the potential to outperform the market, but does have a few picks that he says are safer bets than others. Dirk Hoffman Becking is with us now from Sanford Team Bernstein in London. Dirk, thanks so much for joining us. That ECB report said yesterday banks may need $110 billion, at least of net write downs, loans, and securities in 2010, basically the same amount in 2011. What is an investor to do? First of all, do you think those figures are optimistic or pessimistic? I think when you look at the ECB figures, what you should see is that actually the ECB has taken down its expectations. They had an expectation of 550 billion cum cumulative losses for the period 2007 to 10. They've taken this down to 500 billion. So the numbers are actually down. They're down in particular around the losses on the securities portfolios of what we classically call the toxic assets. And they also expect some write backs and to the tune of about 32 billion. But what's interesting about the ECB numbers is that they're pretty clearly exclude the effects of the current debt uh, crisis in Europe from their numbers because, as we all, they have no idea how much this is going to be. Now, and if we. Dirk, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I mean, you say essentially that investors' best plan is to look at some of the countries where basically they don't have uh, their assets priced in euros, and that is to say Switzerland and the UK. Are those the best banking stocks to pick in this environment? That's pretty much what we think. I mean, if you think about a potential breakup uh, scenario, what that creates is an unhedgeable FX risk. If you're outside the Eurozone, at least you can hedge yourself against the Euro so you can take some comfort. Plus, what we see with the UK banks and the Swiss banks is that their banking se sector as a whole does have a lot less exposure to the Euro uh, Eurozone countries, in particular the southern European countries. And therefore, we think this is a relatively safe place to go to. And if you add to that an expectation of growth in the US, and in particular growth in US investment banking, then names like Credit Suisse, UBS, and Barclays look comparatively more attractive than the continental European names. So UBS, Credit Suisse, and Barclays. But you say the French banks are also taking uh, worth taking a look at, BNP Paribas, SocGen, because you say if Europe is able to grow, these names could benefit by about 35%. Yes, absolutely. I mean, you know, we're, we're in a situation where we have three very different potential outcomes. One is the growth actually comes back, and that's not totally impossible. I mean, typically in a deleveraging but scenario. But how likely is it, Dirk? Will you say it's not impossible on a scale of one to ten? How likely is it? Um, it's, it's more a question of timing. I think it will definitely come. It, it comes every time about two to three years after the deleveraging period. It's a question of whether it's going to become quick enough. So on a scale of one to ten, it's probably, you know, one or two, so it's not very probable. But it's not something we should completely discount. And if it does, then definitely the French banks will be the place to be. Can you handicap, I know you said growth, unite or die, I heard you say, for Europe. Can you, ha can you <laughs> handicap the other two scenarios, either the unite or the die, also on scales of one to Ten. So I think the the most probable outcome is a is a unite scenario. But a unite scenario is quite a um, a serious step for in particular the Germans. Unite means basically that we find a way by which the interest rates across the eurozone come back into a very narrow range against the German debt, and that in my view requires one of three things: either you know the um, uh, the Germans guarantee all southern European debt or all southern Europeans become like Germany or Germany becomes like the southern Europeans. And, um, you know, all three things are quite, you know, long shots, but there are on a, you know, we've okay, got 12 Dirk. to 18 months to get there. 12 to 18 months, we have to leave it there. In the meantime, Dirk says take a look at Swiss and UK banks.